In our previous video, Recording Electric Guitar Part 1, we explored different mic placements in front of a guitar amplifier and compared the sound of three different microphones. In this video, we will put five microphones in different places and blend them in different combinations. After our last video shoot, we experimented with different placements for our microphones. We put the Shure SM57LC right at the edge of the voice coil, four inches from the grill. We got a really nice sparkly high end here. The Sennheiser MD421 has a more extended low end response than the SM57, so we decided to use it to fill in the bass frequencies. We found some nice solid low end and some clear presence in the high mid range about 2 inches to the right of the voice coil, also 4 inches from the grill. We then tried the Royer R101 ribbon mic and found that at 4 inches it picked up a bit too much bass. It is common for ribbon mics with a figure 8 polar pattern to have a very pronounced proximity effect, so we moved the R101 further away and ended up 7 inches from the grill, pointing at a spot midway between the voice coil and the edge of the speaker. This mic sounded creamy smooth and really filled in the mid-range frequencies between 250 and 2000 Hz. With our highs, mids, and lows covered, we decided to place an MXL2001 cardioid condenser about 4 feet from the amp to pick up a more distant sound. Condenser mics are more sensitive than dynamics and can distort easily when placed too close to loud sound sources like amplifiers. The extra distance from the amp keeps the sound clean and lets us hear a bit more of the room. Then we did something totally nuts. We took another MD421 and placed it behind the amp. Back here you get almost nothing but bass. Here's some clean and some distorted guitar from back here in no man's land. Now that we have all these options, it's time to start blending microphones. First, let's combine the SM57 with the MD421. Remember that these two mics were both 4 inches from the grill. The 57 gave us a sparkly high end and the 421 really fills out the lows. Now let's add in some of the MXL2001 condenser that we placed 4 feet from the amp. But before we do that, we need to consider the fact that the 2001 was farther away than the close mics. The sound takes longer to reach the 2001 and you can see this if you zoom in on your waveforms. 
There are lots of places where the waveforms from the close mics are trying to push the speaker cone towards you while the distant mic track is trying to pull it away from you. This can alter your tone. We measured the time differences between each close mic and the most distant mic and then delayed the close mics using plugins. Let's compare the tracks with and without time alignment. Time aligning these tracks really tightens up the lows and makes the highs pop. We went back and delayed all the close mics to match the most distant one. Try it for yourself and see if you get similar results. Of course, some engineers place multiple microphones at different distances from an amplifier and don't time align them as an intentional technique to get different tonal colors. Now that we are all time aligned, we are ready to explore the vast array of tones we have available by blending different combinations of these mics. And that is what we will do in our next video, Recording Electric Guitar Part 3.